of Guardian Newspapers Limited, I endorse all that my learned friend has said. My clients now appreciate that the allegations made in their article were incorrect, and through me wish to express their sincere apologies to McDonald's for the damage done to the company's reputation. The publishers of today's newspaper accept that their defamatory allegations against the plaintiff were unfounded, should never have been printed, and consequently they withdraw them. On behalf of the defendant, I accept everything that my learned friend has said. I would add that Channel 4 welcomes this opportunity to apologise to McDonald's. We apologise to McDonald's for any embarrassment I recognise that the allegations against we McDonald's in their McDonald's article. practices and policies are beyond reproach. They paid a suitable sum of damages. There's no truth in any of these damages. The above suggest. statement is unfair and untrue. The authors me. shall not knowingly allow the play to be performed again. We ask you to accept our apology. What they've actually done is to, to hold McDonald accountable to society on behalf of society. And uh, I, th uh, I think they're heroes of our time. It really began with one person, with Helen, just saying, I can't apologize. Just one person saying, no. I won't bow down. Well, when I was quite young, there was a boy at the end of our street who used to basically bully everyone around. And um, everyone used to go crying to their mums and dads, uh, you know. And uh, I think eventually my mum got sort of fed up with it and just said, well, hit him back. So I did, and after that, he didn't hassle me anymore. Well, it's the same with McDonald's, really. You know, if somebody's trying to make you do something that you don't believe in, then you have to stand up to them and say, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to give in to your intimidation and bullying. When Charlie was two, he sat with his mum, and really for about the last four years, I've been looking after Charlie on my own which is obviously a, a job in itself, full-time job and a big responsibility. I have a responsibility to encourage him to question things, for him to be himself and not just, like, be obsessed with the next Power Rangers toys. He's growing up in a very hostile environment. All the images that are forced on kids from advertising, the media, it's all bombarding him, telling him the way the world should be. Well, me and Dave have been friends since the 80s. I was working as a gardener and Dave used to be a postman. We share a lot of the same beliefs and um, we also both feel it's important to stand up for what you believe in. It's not a personal battle between me and Helen and McDonald's. This is uh, about the public's right to know what the most powerful organisations in the world, which are multinational corporations, uh, are really doing. 7th of January 1988, I've started going regularly to a local campaign group, London Greenpeace, unrelated to well-known Greenpeace. We meet once a week in North London to arrange protests on various social and environmental issues. There had been lots of groups campaigning against McDonald's around the world on specific issues like, you know, rainforest groups in the States and in Australia. There were trade unionists fighting for better working conditions. There were nutritionists criticising McDonald's for the junk food. There were animal welfareists campaigning about the way that animals were reared and slaughtered. But I think that it was London Greenpeace that really drew all the criticisms together. 
the What's Wrong with McDonald's leaflets focused on um, the unhealthy food, the working conditions, animal cruelty, plus the environmental damage and advertising to children. The McDonald's campaign has picked on a company that's so much in the public eye that seems to symbolise a whole system, a whole way of life. To have a leafleting, an educational campaign against McDonald's is putting the alternative point of view. But of course I just had no idea what it would lead to. Uh, that later it would just completely take over my life. 8th of February 1990. London Greenpeace meeting tonight. There's been a few new people in recent months who don't seem genuine. Who are they? Assignment number L11389. As instructed, I left the office at 7pm on the above date and travelled to the office of subject group. Pressing the bell push label Greenpeace resulted in the door being opened by a woman of oriental extraction. I introduced myself with a fictitious name. She did not ask for any other details and she appeared not to be much interested in my background. This guy turned up at the meetings who didn't quite seem to sort of, you know, fit in. He didn't really say that much about what his politics were. But at the time we just sort of thought, well, you know, maybe he's a policeman but we're not doing anything wrong or illegal or anything so, well, why worry about it? I knew that Helen suspected that there were some kind of infiltrators in the group. Um, and I said, don't be stupid, that's just something which, you know, you read about in books. My role was actually to notice everything that was happening, where it was being held, describe the, the place that it was being held in, the people who were there, what they were wearing, what their names were and everything that was said, and in particular, everything that was said in relation to McDonald's. One of the spies, Alan Clare, stole letters, broke into the office to take photographs, um, followed people home. We were infiltrated for about 18 months by seven different spies uh, from two different agencies. McDonald's hadn't told them about being two firms, and so they were spying on each other some of the time. And um, at some meetings, there were as many spies as there were campaigners. I was asked to introduce another person into the group. Her name was Michelle Hooker, and I believe she was an ex-policewoman. I was quite surprised when she came along for the first time because I thought I had to sort of dress down and wear sandals and sort of hippie-type clothes, you know. But um, she used to drive up in a black BMW. She used to give me a lift in it. And she got very heavily involved with the group. You know, she organised meetings, she organised pickets. She even had a six-month relationship with somebody in the group and stayed with his family over Christmas. I managed to find, in a drawer, bank statements for London Greenpeace. They bank with the cooperative bank Islington. We went Account on to the Malton Hot Public House. While here, the conversation turned to Dave Morris, and I learned that he lives in Tottenham. He has a son who is called Charlie, and he was born... One of them uh, wanted to get my address, and he sent... He asked someone in the group what, was, what my address was because he wanted to send me some baby clothes for my son Charlie, and he actually sent these clothes to me, uh, which, which Charlie wore. It wasn't until several years later that we found out the real reason that they wanted our home addresses. 21st of September 1990. Five of us in the group have received libel writs over the What's Wrong with McDonald's leaflets. I think it was dark and uh, there was a guy standing in front of me um, as I stepped from the van and he said, Helen. And uh, I didn't say anything because I didn't know who he was. And he just threw this envelope at my feet, and um, when I picked it up and opened it, it was the, the writ. In with the writ was a letter saying that there'd be a court case, unless we apologised. After the writs were served, we had two hours 
of free legal aid, um, which effectively meant being told you've got no chance. The other three people who'd, be, who'd had the writs they felt that, you know, they didn't really have any choice but to sort of apologise because of the odds being stacked against us. But for me, it just sort of really stuck in the throat to apologise to McDonald's. Um, you know, I, I didn't think that we'd done anything that deserved an apology. I thought it was them that should be apologising to us. Um, well, not us specifically, but to society for the damage that they do to society and the environment. Really, when Helen said she was going to go for it, I thought... I'm going to go for it too because uh, two is better than one. Even though, you know, we were being told it was like a virtually impossible battle, um, me and Dave decided to to carry on and fight it anyway. Um, come what may, really. The world's largest fast food business, McDonald's, has begun a libel action at the High Court against two environmental campaigners. Dave Morris and Helen Steele are accused of claiming that McDonald's products caused ill health and destroyed rainforests. McDonald's argued that we should be denied a jury because a jury would find the issues in the case too complex to deal with. And we just thought, oh, you know, that'll be thrown out it's just so ridiculous you know we've got to understand it we're ordinary members of the public so you know why can't a jury understand what's going on but much to our horror <laughs> it wasn't just thrown out um, you know the judge went along with their argument and ruled that we wouldn't have a jury and um, basically that meant we were left presenting the case to a judge on his own Mr Justice Bell McDonald's hired one of the top libel barristers in the country, Richard Rampton QC. He gets about £2,000 a day. He brought with him uh, a junior barrister, Timothy Atkinson, and also a head solicitor, Patty Brindley Codd, and a whole team of about seven solicitors and clerks uh, working behind the scenes. And meanwhile, we were defending ourselves. The fast food company McDonald's has begun a high court libel action against two environmental campaigners. In court this morning, counsel for McDonald's said the allegations were totally false. As far as McDonald's are concerned, anybody is free to express his criticism in whatever form he wishes. McDonald's may not like it, but they would never try to prevent it. They cannot and do not object to fair and reasonable and honest criticism of their business or their products. We just had no idea of, of the procedure or what we had to say or when we had to say it, um, you know, who spoke in what order. We were just treated like, you know, what are these people doing in my courtroom? That's, that's the attitude we got. I mean, in the first hearing, um, we asked the judge to explain the procedures and he said, if you don't know the procedures, you should be represented. And we said, well, there's no legal aid. What are we meant to do? We pride ourselves on having a legal system which is the best in the world and we pride ourselves on the fact that we've all got free speech but in reality of course that simply isn't the situation you don't get free lawyers for libel cases so we had to represent ourselves but luckily Keir came along early on and volunteered to help us out with legal advice I immediately saw that uh, McDonald's had a very strong legal team and that it was a complicated case raising all sorts of issues and as soon as I saw the imbalance, um, I decided that I would do what I could to help them. The libel laws um, in England and Wales are notoriously um, anti-free speech um, because of the burdens they put on defendants to prove so much of the case. So in this case, David and Helen have to prove the truth um, of everything that's in the leaflet. Um, McDonald's can sit back and prove nothing. That's a huge and disproportionate burden. My Lord, the topic is nutrition. The issue as I pose it is this. Does the plaintiff's food constitute a significant hazard to human health? Mm -hmm. 